From horse armor to pasty removal, downloadable content has had a rocky history in the gaming world. My hatred burns. The world heaves with my torment. But at last, the whole of Azeroth will break and all will burn beneath the shadow of my wings. World of Warcraft Cataclysm. In stores now. Before microtransactions became a norm, DLC was a way for publishers to extract value from games that were already on the market. Today, I'm counting down the worst examples of shameless and low-effort DLC ever released. And we'll start with Marvel's Avengers and how it slowly assembled content. Square Enix was certainly onto something when they tried to capitalize on the wild popularity of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. An interactive action-adventure role-playing game starring Marvel's premier hero was a slam dunk of a concept. Unfortunately, the game really started off on the wrong foot with fans. Its marketing had convinced gamers that it'd be a straightforward co-op adventure. But when it was released, it turned out to be one of those gosh darn games as a service thing. Well, such games are often supported by a drip feed of post-release content. And this is where Square Enix shot themselves in the foot even further. So the first major content release for the game was Clint Barton's Hawk a new character. Yay! The next one was Spider-Man. Bigger yay? Not quite. You see, because of Sony's partnership with Marvel, Spidey was going to be exclusive to Sony's consoles. Oh boy. While all the other characters were available on all other platforms, can you really compare Hawkeye, Black Panther, Thor, or Winter Soldier to Spidey? Between the Spidey controversy and the game's never-ending battle with bugs, the game's reputation was in tatters. On January 20th, this year, Crystal Dynamics announced the end of DLC, and End of Life was coming in September. If you want an even worse version of this, we have to turn to Evolve. Some would argue Evolve was a DLC sales scheme more than a game. If you weren't around for the gaming scene in 2015, Evolve was one of the most hyped releases of the year. Turtle Rock Studios had previously created Magic with Left for Dead. This was their first game since they ended their partnership with Valve, and a co-op shooter in which a team takes on a monster also controlled by a player? From this company? What could possibly go wrong? See, a lot of gamers can't understand paying for content that a developer created after the release of a game. But what Turtle Rock did was drop a deluge of content right at the start. What made it worse was that Evolve launched with your classic Season Pass. For some reason though, the Season Pass only covered some of the content. This idea was that you'd buy the season pass and then pay for the extra content that wasn't covered. On top of that, you had to pay 60 bucks for the game itself. At least this last point was fixed a year later when the game went free to play, but the damage was done and there was little they could do to salvage it. Interestingly, the game does have a core fan base of players. Still, it never reached the heights that I think it could have. All right, it's time to put Crystal Dynamics back in the hot seat, because next we're going to look at Tomb Raider. Now, the reboot that Crystal Dynamics did for gaming's veteran adventurer 10 years ago was promising. Taking influences from Uncharted, the new Tomb Raider was a more explosive and cinematic game. They also got Rihanna Pratchett to write the game, and she turned Laura Croft into a more interesting character. Since this was her origin story, Laura was more human, vulnerable, and experienced trauma that ended up hardening her. The game was broadly praised for successfully bringing Laura into the 2010s. And then Square Enix stepped on a rake. Their DLC strategy focused almost entirely on the game's tacked-on multiplayer mode. They released a whole load of maps for the 10 or so people playing this game online. Meanwhile, for the people who played this game solo, there were just a few pieces of content. One was a pack of skins, which was fine. The other was the Tomb of the Lost Adventurer. All you got in this pack was one bonus tomb with easy puzzles. And if you couldn't tell this was a low-effort release, the tomb had lots of 
of bugs in it too. This may not have been enough to tarnish the game forever, but I'm honestly impressed with the lack of effort. Before we continue, I think some of the younger gamers watching would enjoy a history lesson. Let's take a look at the fabled Horse Armor. This really is the daddy of all downloadable content controversies. It took a while for the industry to top it, but when the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion came out in like 2006, DLC was in its infancy. Publishers were still trying to figure out the most effective way to create and sell content post-release. Bethesda's idea for the first ever DLC for the game was Horse Armor. Yeah, just hand them $2.50 on the Xbox Marketplace to put armor on your horses. Now, gamers today might lack the perspective to see why this was bad. I mean, $2.50 would get you one skin in today's gaming climate. But back then, it was a huge deal. However, let's move on to a DLC that's outrageous by even today's standards, because there's no way I could leave Leviathan off this list. Before I begin, though, I should probably tell you what Europa Universalis 4 is. EU4 is what's known as a grand strategy game. Grand strategy is basically what happens when Sid Meier's civilization pounds a six-pack of Red Bull in one sitting. Playing on a map of the entire planet, players will build their military, politics, and economy to basically conquer the world. This game is so huge that there's no EU5 on the horizon. No, sir. The publisher is releasing content for this fourth installment even now, with Lions of the North just coming out in 2022. It's their 2021 release, Leviathan, that got the most flack, however. The idea for the expansion was to make tall strategies more viable, allowing players to make smaller but more powerful empires. But when it was released, it was buggy AF and amazingly contained placeholder art. That's a level of shoddiness you won't find anywhere on this list. That made Leviathan the worst reviewed product in all of Steam at one point, and it's still down there at the bottom of the list even now. Now, if you've been waiting for the pasties, here they are. Remember the Saboteur? It was the game that turned out to be the last gasp of the beloved Pandemic Studios. Very nice name, by the way. Basically, it was like Assassin's Creed Unity, but in World War II. While the game was decent, its one and only piece of DLC was not. Titled The Midnight Show, the game added the one thing the game needed most, more brothels. These places were where you could hide when you had this game's equivalent of wanted stars. Even more importantly though, this DLC took the pasties off the dancers at these brothels. Cool, but how did they charge money for this? You see, publisher EA had a really insidious way of discouraging sales of used games at the time. They would include content packs inside new copies of games, redeemable by a one-time use code. If you bought the game used, you wouldn't have access to this content, and you'd have to buy it. Good thing the rise of digital distribution put a stop to such practices. That's all the terrible DLCs I have for you today.